episode of E Weekly, your home for campus news. We've been gone a while, so we have some catching up to do. Buildings have been constructed, buildings are being constructed, and there have been constructive commons built outside of buildings. We have the dish, Eagle Sports, and Eagle Encounters. This week on Eastern Weekly. Hey there, everyone. Please don't be mad. I know last time we saw each other was the beginning of the month, and now it's the end, but we've had a lot going on, and uh, yeah, so please forgive us. I'm Nina Maria Badalamenti. And I'm Sarah Potteracki. Between our bye week and Thanksgiving, our plates have been full of obligations and turkey. Like Nina said, I hope you can forgive us for being absent for so long, and that means we've got some catching up to do. So Nina, take it away. On Friday, November 10th, four students created sculptures to display around Prey Herald as a means to encourage recycling and sustainability around campus. This idea was part of a class project for their Community and Collaborative Projects course. Abigail Ver Vermeulen, excuse me, Rayleigh McCray, Ethan Click, and Gracie Greaves created these displays to make students more aware of what they are throwing away. These sculptures consisted of a tin man made of cans, a tree made of plastic bags, and a variety of recycled papers. They also sprayed chalk quotes from a book called Eco Dementia by Janet Kaufman to promote inspiration. In addition, the group created a blog called 420, The 422 Crew, inspired by the catalog number for their course. Through their research, the group found that many students aren't recycling things that can be because of lack of incentive. Students don't often think about where their trash is going. As a solution, the group suggested merely placing more recycling bins around campus. The group is hopeful that their displays allowed students to think a little bit more about where their trash is going. With the holidays coming up, one thing is always a given. Packages will be traveling to and fro all over the country. Eastern Michigan students have been given a very convenient way to pick up any of their packages purchased through Amazon. Amazon at Ypsilanti offers a safe and secure location to pick up and return items as well as in-person customer service. This is the 33rd location in the country, but Amazon's first location in Michigan. Officially opened this November, the store is located on the southern end of the ground floor of the Student Center, with entrances from both inside and outside of the building. The modern-looking, user-friendly shop offers students, staff, and the greater Ypsilanti community a location to pick up items and return them for free. The pickup site is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from noon to 9 p.m. On Tuesday, November 14th, gubernatorial candidate Gretchen Whitmere gave a meet and greet in the Student Center Auditorium. About 40 people attended this event to hear what Whitmere had to say about herself and her campa campaign along with the Q&A session that was held at the end of her speech. The event kicked off talking about education in Michigan and the debt that many students are left with which is driving people out of the state. She continued to discuss plans of government-funded tuition. Whitmer then went on to talk about other topics such as health care, greater transparency with political information, infrastructure plans, and eliminating gerrymandering. During the Q&A session, she was faced with questions about pot a potential single-payer health system, which some felt she didn't fully answer. However, others felt she responded well with the pressing questions. Whitmer was the third gubernatorial candidate to visit Eastern, preceded by Abdul El Said and Sheree Thanadir. The Michigan gubernatorial election will take place November 6, 2018. College students that live off campus often face a struggle when they run out of groceries. Coupons and a running total of their groceries are a must anytime they go shopping. Most EMU students do their shopping at both the Meyer and Kroger on Carpenter, but in the near future, they might have another option. A preliminary site plan has recently been submitted to the Pittsfield Township Planning Commission with details highlighting an Aldi grocery store being built at 3113 Carpenter Road, just off of Packard and east of US 23. The property is being purchased by Miles of Golf, with the grocery store being built south of the business. Aldi usually sells only one brand of each product, resulting in competitively low prices. They also don't hire a large amount of employees. This lower number of staffing means their employees are usually paid a higher starting rate than many competing grocery stores. This $1.4 million project is projected to start construction during mid-May of 2018. We're going to take a quick break. We promise we will return after. Don't go far. Hey Ben, I saw that you had an eventful weekend. What do you mean? Duh! 
Then, those party photos you posted online a couple days ago where you were living it up. You know, the ones where you were YOLOing all over the place. Here, let me show you. All right, all right, I got it. <laughs> Y-O-L-O, you only live once. It's my excuse tech crazy. <laughs> I deleted those pictures, though. Ah, uh, yeah, about that. I screen grabbed some of those pictures and sent them to Benji. It was golden. You have to remember, Ben. What goes online stays online. And once it's out there, it's out there forever. Well, it's out there now. Most of the time, after something gets posted to social media, it will be duplicated many times from server backups, living in the cloud forever, even after you remove it. A good rule of thumb is if you think what you're about to post could be harmful to you or someone else, just don't post it. Yeah, last thing I want is for my family, or even worse, my employer or my friends to see me YOLOing all over social media. Yeah. That applies to more than just pictures, you know. It can apply to all types of content posted online, including text and videos. Oh, man. You should also be cautious about the amount of personal information you have available online for people to see, such as your full name, birth date, address, phone number, mother's maiden name, etc. Yeah, I'd hate for someone to see you're going to be at a party Saturday night. Go to your profile, get your home address, and break into your house while you're out partying. Or use your birth date and your mother's maiden name to answer a security question in an attempt to reset your online password and hack your account. I definitely wouldn't want that to happen. Me neither. But being selective about the information you have accessible for people to see is very important. Check your privacy settings on your social media sites to make sure they only have information you want people to see. Yeah, I like to copy my profile URL, log out of the website, and paste it back into my web browser. Then I look over my profile to get an idea of what information of mine is open to the public. That is a great idea. It sure is. So what else are you going to do, Ben? I'm going to stop and consider any consequences before I post any type of content to my social media websites. In today's cyber world, the number of passwords you have to remember can be overwhelming. While it may be tempting to reuse the same passwords or store them in a not so safe place, in doing so, you're putting your online accounts and data in danger of being compromised. The Eagle Security Package includes LastPass, an encrypted online password vault that can store all your usernames, passwords, and other personal information in one location. LastPass secures your login credentials using one master password, the last password you'll have to remember. Not only does LastPass store your login credentials, but it can automatically fill them in when you're logging into trusted websites. LastPass can also aid in the creation of strong, unique passwords and secure sensitive data such as addresses, credit cards, and personal notes. Since LastPass is encrypted and protected in the cloud, it's accessible wherever you are, through the LastPass website, a web browser extension, or the mobile app. LastPass makes password security easy. For more information about LastPass, visit tiny.emich.edu forward slash LastPass. Welcome back to eWeekly. Sarah Potteracki has the lowdown on EMU Theater's latest production you can check out. EMU Theater is set to debut their new production this week. Harvey is a Pulitzer Prize winning comedy written by Mary Chase. This EMU production will be directed by John Seibert. A period piece, Harvey follows the Dowd family during one extraordinary day. Elwood P. Dowd has a mysterious invisible best friend that gets the family into a bit of a mess. Senior Matt Delisle, cast as Elwood, had a difficult time working with an invisible friend, saying blocking around an invisible person with no indication of what Harvey is doing is pretty tough. The play is a comedy, but an audience age of 10 and up is suggested. Harvey opens this Saturday on December 1st and has shows on the 2nd, 7th, 8th, and 9th at 7 p.m. and December 3rd and 10th at 2 p.m. in Quirk Theater. Tickets are $12 for students and can be purchased at emutix.com, the Quirk box office, or by calling 734-487-2282. On Wednesday, November 15th, EMU student organization, The AMP, hosted their annual Java Jam event at the Student, Center near, excuse me, student Center's newly renovated Starbucks. Students were able to enjoy free entertainment and free coffee provided by dining, EMU Dining Services. The event presented a number of musical acts, including a ukulele performance, hip-hop beat making, live guitar performance, and more, all debuted by students. A performance by EMU's very own a cappella group, Emerald Harmony, was also featured. The AMP is a student organization that's goal is to connect student art, excuse me, artists with audiences, venues, and opportunities 
as well as empower them to take their creative practices and move them into careers. The annual Java Jam and other events like it create experience and exposure for student performers. Keep an eye out for more of AMP's events. AMP's next event will be their Handmade for the Holidays, taking place Wednesday, December 6th at the Student Center. Still to come, we have Evan Hensley filling us in on the last month in Eagle Sports. Before we go to him, though, we have a new face filling in for Thomas Kruick on the dish. Thank you, Sarah. I'm Carly Angott, and I'm excited to get in front of the camera this week. It gets awfully chaotic in the control room. As we all know, last Thursday marked another Thanksgiving, the time of year when college students eat as much home-cooked food as possible and rediscover their family's opinions on the NFL and the National Anthem. While this was all taking place, Depot Town's beloved Aubrey's Pizzeria held their annual Thanksgiving event for those who had nowhere to go for the holiday. This started during last year's Thanksgiving when Aubrey's owner Sandy French opened up her Marquette location for any of those in need of a meal. The idea was sparked by French's son, who thought it would be good to offer free traditional Thanksgiving meals to those in need and to college students who were unable to go home for the holiday. French stressed how important she feels community is when it comes to the holidays. She believes no one should celebrate on their own. Last year's event was such a success that it expanded this year to two other locations in the area, including our very own Depot Town. Volunteers of friends, family, and Aubrey's employees helped serve over 350 pounds of turkey last Thursday, along with salad, green bean casserole, yams, stuffing, and a slice of pumpkin pie for dessert. Though the meals were free, Aubrey still took donations towards the Hope Clinic, which is a nonprofit designed for those who are uninsured and in need of medical care. The family restaurant hopes to continue with this festive tradition in future years, bringing smiles and full stomachs to anyone without a friend for the holiday. Since opening their doors in 1972, Aubrey's has always been family first, believing coming together to celebrate big milestones as well as everyday accomplishments. You could stop in to try their famous pizza or any of their other diverse options from the grill. Aubrey's now has 10 locations in Michigan, but you could stop into Ypsilanti location Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. and Sunday from noon to 2 a.m. That's all the time I have for you today. Make sure to stick around for next week's show where Thomas Crook will be back and better than ever to lead this segment. Until then, we'll just have to wait. After the break, we have Evan Hensley who will give the rundown on what's been going on in EMU sports. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to another Inside the Actors Studio video with EMU Theater. Today, we are going to be talking about our upcoming December show, Harvey. And with me, I have... I'm Sarah Gunter. I am a sophomore. I am a theater arts major, and I am Vito Louis Simmons. Matt Delisle, I'm a senior, I'm an ISP, it's an Individualized Studies program, and I'm playing Elwood P. Dowd. So Harvey is about one extraordinary day in the lives of the Dowd family. Uh, led by Elwood P. Dowd, the family has taken on a series of adventures caused by Elwood's invisible best friend. So can you guys tell us a little bit about your character in the show? Elwood is like this, he's a, how do I put this? This is about the most pleasant man on the planet that causes the most problems. I am just this hectic, crazy woman who just kind of drives the madness against my brother. What has been the hardest part of the rehearsal process so far? Uh, I think me just blocking around an invisible person. There's no indication in the script where Harvey is or what he's saying or what he's doing. And so trying to figure out all of that is, is pretty tough. <laughs> The most challenging thing for me so far would have to be the, the character work itself. Playing a character so much older and in the time period that she was, just kind of getting into her mindset. What's the best part about doing um, a period piece that's set in the 1940s? I also work in the costume shop downstairs, so getting to actually be hands-on with the actual like vintage costumes and the whole feel is super cool. Are there any challenges that come with doing a period piece like this? Yes. Yeah. The biggest uh, challenge I know I've had so far is certainly the dialogue. Yeah, we're not really allowed to stray yeah. and paraphrase and anything. You know, we all catch ourselves paraphrasing, making uh, it feel more natural to us, us. but that doesn't actually, that yeah. tends to change the content mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. This show is directed by one of the staff members here, John Seibert. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about John's directing style and how he works with you guys? It's a really, really organic process working with John. He doesn't have everything meticulously planned out, but you can tell that he has a vision. What have you learned from doing Harvey, and what will you take away from this production? One of the m main messages in the show itself is the whole don't judge a book by its cover, and it's sort of that, but with a twist. Because, like, you were right, but there's also 
more stuff inside that you wouldn't expect to see. You guys can come see Harvey opening the first weekend in December right here at EMU Theater. I'm addicted to Facebook. I'm always on it. I was checking out my feeds one day when I noticed an ad to test and keep an iPad. So I clicked the link. All I needed to get was my contact info. You know, home address, email address, cell phone number. Seems pretty easy to get a free iPad. A week goes by and I never get a new iPad. And I noticed I was getting hundreds of text ads on my phone. Because of all the extra text messages sent to my phone, my bill went up 10 bucks. Yeah. I wasn't getting a free iPad. They were just fishing for my phone number to sell to advertisers. I know there are legitimate ads on Facebook, but if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. My name is Nate, and I'm trying to be eSafe. Welcome back. This is Eagle Sports, and I'm Evan Hensley. It's been so long since we've had a show that in the meantime, EMU has played three football games. The Eagles went 2-1 and one in, with their final three games of the season, their loss coming to Central Michigan on the 8th of the month. Roback struggled to find his receivers against the Chips as he threw for five interceptions, the final one a pick six that decided the game during the last drive in the fourth quarter. EMU fell 42-30. to The following week, EMU edged past Miami of Ohio by a field goal. Ian Erickson had a big game against the Red Hawks as he rushed for 117 yards. On the defensive side, Max Crosby came up big with, a th with three sacks. The Eagles defeated the Red Hawks 27-24. Finally, another close contest finished in favor of EMU as they beat the 2-10 Bowling Green Falcons 34-31. A first quarter field goal was the difference for the Eagles last Tuesday at Rynearson. The rush game came up huge for Eagle Eastern Michigan as Shaq Van and, and Ian Erickson combined for 221 yards and three touchdowns. Erickson found the end zone on all three times. AMU finished the season a disappointing 5-7, fifth in the MAC West. The Eagles season might not have panned out the way that they hoped, but Max Crosby had a standout year. The sophomore defensive end is one of the players added to the watch list for the Hendricks Award. Named after University of Miami's Ted Hendricks, who won four NFL Super Bowls, this award goes to the student athlete who primarily plays defensive end and exhibits a high level of field performance, positive attitude, as well as off-the-field contributions in the classroom and in the community. Crosby had 11 sacks this season, tying the single-season school record for EMU set back in 1996 by Avery Bradley. Crosby is tied for third in the country in sacks. He had 57 tackles, including four forced fumbles and a scoop and score against Central Michigan. This year, EMU de EMU's defense was one of the best in the nation, and Max Crosby definitely played a major role in the success. The winner of the Hendricks Award will be announced December 6th. The EMU men's basketball team has been quite busy since we've been gone, also. After scoring over 90 points in the first two games of the year, both wins, the success continued for the Eagles. They scored 76 in both games against Arkansas State and Howard at the Convocation Center. Both pretty easy wins. They faced their biggest challenge of the season when they traveled to Assembly Hall to face the Indiana Hoosiers. The Eagles held, on, held, a tough def, f, <laughs> held tough, but fell in the Big Ten school 87-67, losing the second half by 15 points. After a victory at South Florida on Sunday, the EMU men's basketball team improves to 5-1 on the young season. Redshirt junior Elijah Minnie has jumped out to a great start to his EMU career as he leads the team, averaging almost 17 points a game. Point guard Paul Jackson has also started the season strong, averaging just over 14 points a game with almost five assists. And James Thompson is up to his old tricks again as he scored a double-double in all but one game this season. EMU takes on North Florida tonight in Jacksonville at 7 p.m. on ESPN3. The women's team has not started as hot as they are just 2-4 and four this season. They play Minnesota this Sunday at 1 p.m. Former EMU basketball star Ray Lee signed a contract with the Santa Cruz Warriors of the NBA's G League. The G League is the NBA's minor league team, formerly known as the D League. The league has grown to 26 teams with another one being added during the next season. All teams are affiliated or owned by an NBA team. The Santa Cruz Warriors are the minor league team for the reigning NBA champions, the Golden State Warriors. 
As for Ray Lee, he played for EMU from 2012 to 2017, racking up an impressive career. He is also fourth all-time in points scored in school history, including most of those in a single game when he scored 50 against Central Michigan on February 28th of 2017. That's been it for your Eagle Sports in the month of November. I'm Evan Hensley, and we'll see you next week. I'll be right back. I told myself I'm just going to grab a quick drink. Two minutes later, and everything was gone. My backpack, my laptop, my cell phone, my iPod. Two minutes was all it took. I was lucky. The thief was eventually caught, and I got it all back. But now that I had that happen to me, I realized that anything valuable has to be treated like cash. I'll never leave it out of my sight again. My name is Heather, and I'm trying to be safe. Welcome back to E-Weekly. We're wrapping up November as well as wrapping up the show. Alicia Lewis is here with Eagle Encounters. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Lewis. I hope you all enjoyed your break and were able to catch up on sleep, spend time with your loved ones, and eat till exhaustion. On my end, I might have ate a little bit too much turkey, but when else is it acceptable? Regardless, it's time to get back into the groove of things this weekend, starting on Friday, December 1st. As stated earlier, the EMU Theater presents Harvey, a comedy classic that will leave you in a great mood. This play will take place from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. on the Kirk Theater. A $15 ticket is required. They can be purchased in the Kirk box office. Contact Pam Cardell for more information at 734-487-1220. Also on Friday, Ann Arbor jazz legend and bassist Ron Brooks will present his annual holiday jazz show at Rush Street located at 314 South Main Street. He will be joined by two jazz favorites, pianist Tad Weed and drummer George Davison, and a special guest. You'll just have to attend if you want to find out who it is. This live event will run from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. It's free of charge and open to the public. The Student Center, once again, will host their weekly Friday movie. This week, they will be showing the 2017 horror blockbuster, It. If you can't make the first showing at 8 p.m., then head, head over at 1030 because they will be showing it again. If you haven't seen the movie, now is a great time to do so because it is free and everyone is still talking about it. Moving along to Saturday, December 2nd, Season of Lights at the EMU Platerium will be held at the Mark Jefferson Science Complex from 2.30 until 3.30 p.m. Season of Lights explores the reasons humans are so fascinated with the lighting up of our lives during the December holiday. Also on Saturday, improv group Unprepared and Confident will have their first improv performance of the year in the Student Center in room 300. The, so the show starts at 7 p.m. and is guaranteed to make you laugh. Skipping ahead to Monday, December 4th, the annual HIV awareness event will take place in the Student Center. The purpose of this event is to promote, promote safe sex. From 1.30 until 3.30 p.m., there will be free HIV testing in the Student Center rooms 301 and 330. Following the educational promotion portion will be from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. in room 330. This event is free of charge, LBC approved, and offers six, 60 Eagle Rewards appoint, points. As the semester comes to an end, I encourage you to get a head start on some assignments. Don't procrastinate and make sure to finish strong. Use on-campus resources like the Halley Library and the Writing Center located inside Halley to help yourself and your GPA. That is all we have for Eagle Encounters today. My time is up. Thank you for yours. Until next time, I'm Alicia Lewis. Thank you, Alicia. It's that time of year when I don't know what's more full, my stomach from all these holiday feasts or my homework schedule. It definitely is a busy time of the school year, but we'll all be rewarded with a long break in just a couple of weeks. Keep on keeping on. We'll be sure to be back next week. We don't want to have to change the show to E monthly. <laughs> If you want to see this show or any of our previous shows on demand, head over to YouTube and search ETV at EMU. That'll do it for us here at E-Weekly. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sarah Potteracki. And I'm Nina Maria Badalamenti. We'll see you next week.
with you. I'm just looking to charge my phone. I'm looking for keeps. What can I do for you? I got a glimpse into what the future might hold. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. I'm gonna be here a while. People find me when they need me.